Hey everybody, um, I'm Migu. I'm going to be uh, commentating, showing off this uh, Bowser's Inside Story task by Vince1919, who's right here in commentary with me as well. Hello. And uh, well, this is a long run with the Satana cutscene, so let's get started whenever. <laughs> All right. Um, and yeah, we're watching the um, the task videos and code by Spike Stuff. Thank you so much for this, all the great screen switching and all that. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, so this is an, a, an RPG, Mario and Luigi RPG. Um, it's the third in the Mario, Mario and Luigi RPG series after Super Star Saga and Partners in Time, and it, it's on its DS game from two thousand nine. And this is just the uh, introduction to the game where the toad comes home and sees uh, He's, he sees his father and something weird happens. That's his father. He's been blorbed, as they say. Um, let's see. Vince, do you have anything to say about the run just right now? Anything else to mention? Um, well, I'd just to say that, yes, it's, a, it's the longest run in the series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, a lot of... Yeah, the other games in the series are, I mean, they're of similar length, they're all RPGs, but they all have um, bigger breaks in them, more glitches and skips and all that. But Bowser didn't set story, unfortunately, or, you know, depending on how you think. Most people say it's unfortunate, but, I mean, it's great to have a long run like this, but it doesn't really have much at all. So we're just playing through the entire game. Um, uh... And because because uh, it doesn't have that many sequence sequence breaks or anything, it's definitely the least most popular to uh, speedrun. Um, and so it's really great that we were able to show off this run finally. It doesn't really have any marathon showcases or anything close to that. And so we finally get movement. Um, yeah, just for a bit. Just for a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, tutorials and stuff that happens before we really get into the meat of the game. Although there's some optimizations there, there's some toad boosts. Yes, I agree. At least the, the intro is not too long, so we will get moving soon. So. Oh, here, the first tutorial fight uh, all we want to do is do enough damage to Bowser well, uh, just after he don't work his gun. So, so before I uh, everything, I, I just do okay jumps. So maybe attacks after. Yeah, the reason is because it doesn't count damage after a certain point, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. And then at this now, point... Like, oh, now, it's a, yeah, now it's 20 damage that I have to do. So I, I get some lucky so, so I can do a shorter jump at the end. Yeah, so by far the biggest difference between uh, this TAS and RTA runs is that there's going to be a lot more RNG manipulation. And what that means is mostly... Yeah, the big, one of the biggest things that means is a lot of lucky hits. And in this game, um, lucky hits are... Do, they do 1.5 times damage. So instead of doing 2 damage, they'll do 3 in this case. I mean, there's some rounding going on, but I guess it ends up being exactly like that in this case. Um, 
And the percentage of luck, of a lucky hit, what was it in this battle? Do you know? I think it's five there. I think it starts at about five early on, and for the for at, at least Mario, it gets down to about three by the end. Yeah, so it depends. The, the chance of a lucky hit depends on the enemy's level and also the character's stash, which won't get changed through the whole run. So as the enemy's level um, gets higher and higher, lucky hits get rarer and rarer. So now we get to switch to Bowser. And the, um, I guess the gimmick of this game is that you control Mario and Luigi and also you also control Bowser. In the quest to, um, well, just, I don't care about spoiling this game at all, so the quest to, uh, <laughs> uh, stop Hawthorne from taking over the entire kingdom. Bowser has the ability to punch and also the ability to breathe fire. And so this is the we, yeah. yeah. We get the great dialogue of Awful. Yeah, Fawful's dialogue is definitely one of the uh, things everyone loves about this game. I guess we should mention, um, uh, this game is probably, uh, I said earlier, it's the least, least popular to speedrun, but I think overall people tend to say that this is their favorite game in the series. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons is just because of how great Fawful is. <laughs> I definitely love a lot of his lines, although they're going by pretty fast in this task. We won't be able to see them too many, but... Mm. Uh... But he gave Bowser the vacuum shroom, or some, it's called something like that, and uh, caused him to devour everything. Maybe not devour, but... uh. Swallow, I know. <laughs> no, no. And Fawful says, uh, just according to plan. So he yeah. got... Bowser to heat up all of um, the other possible uh, blockades to his plan, and then he collapsed. Now we have uh, now we're inside Bowser, where a lot of the gameplay will take place. First thing we have to do is rescue Starlo, who's that star sprite um, captured. This is a Globin who um, teaches. Well, they teach you lots of things throughout the game. Um, I guess this is the first one where to tell you about. Entering pipes. for a counter-attack tutorial. Well, here I, I do okay attacks. Uh, I don't want to kill the enemy too quickly, otherwise I know another one will apparate. Yeah, there's actually 
quite a lot of interesting optimization going on in these tutorial battles to make sure that they end as soon as possible. Because you can kill them, if you, if you just did excellent jumps, then another one would spawn, and it actually takes longer to defeat those if you overall. And it's a similar, um, similar idea for the upcoming tutorial battles as well. But it seems that everybody Bowser and Hale got put into different parts of his body. So for now we just have Mario and Starlo. So one of the hardest things um, for speedrunners to play with, to do with this game is avoiding encounters. Um, of course the tasks will easily avoid, avoid everything. Well, almost everything. <laughs> we'll get to that later on. <laughs> There are sometimes interesting strats uh, for, for some of them. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot harder in, in 2D to dodge enemies. Another tutorial battle, I guess one, this, this one introduced uh, first strikes, in case you hadn't done them before. And also, it was the first time where you attack with Luigi, who uses B instead of A, as with all the other games in the series. Yet again, delaying the kills. So we so we don't spawn back. Here's the first use of um well I guess after this little cutscene, there's gonna be first use of something called stair jumping, where it allows you to climb slopes. Um, so normally when you walk up a slope, your speed is decreased a lot, especially on these steep slopes that uh, they're right next to you right now. Um, but by jumping, by facing the other direction and then jumping, you can keep your high speed. And you only need to face it for one frame, so um, with this task, it doesn't even look like they change directions. So it's pretty cool. You can just pretty much just go up slopes at top speed. In the 2D environments, you have to um, press backwards on that one frame. Um, when you're in 3D, you can just press like horizontally to the direction that the stairs are going in. So it's a little bit better. We're starting to get some attack pieces. Those are for special attacks uh, that do more damage, but also use uh, special points. Yeah, this one's uh, most of them are opt optional to get, but this one's required to progress. Yes, but it's, but it's uh, slow and does not a lot of damage. So. So you want me to use a dad or two. And there's a fun little optimization here where you get Luigi to go on the bottom level. I like how you brought him up there again. <laughs> so, collecting those attack pieces um, means we learn Green Shell, the 
first throw at him, or sorry, <laughs> throw attack. <laughs> he's departed in time. <laughs> uh, and these enemies drop down who are um, who are immune to jumps, so it forces uh, Marluigi to use the green shell that we just that just got. And for some reason, I get a lot of luckies in this <laughs> fight. I, I don't know why. Yeah, but you can see they still do two damage because of rounding stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the original green shell hit. So what's going on there is that green shells, like they did, you know, they did their actual damage is something less than two, but it was rounded up to two, and the lucky hit was something mm -hmm. greater than two, but still rounded down to two. So, <laughs> yeah. Now we get hammers, which are another basic uh, attack, but I don't, not very, not used very often in this task. No. Use it all. Or... So another tutorial battle, this one's for hammers, of course, um, but hammers are kind of slow, so we, ha we have to use them here. Um, there's uh, also the ca hammer counter attack tutorial here. But after this point, we can just use green shells, and it's a lot faster to finish the fight like this. One extra fight, a bit more experience. Yeah, this will help for a boss battle coming up um, in a little while. And for a level up, it's almost always gonna be Pau. In some cases, we. Yeah, power obviously will increase how much damage is done, so that's very important just to defeat bosses. None of the other ones really matter because, well, for HP and defense, you can avoid every attack. That's one of the hallmarks of this game, of the series. Um, SP, in theory, could be useful if there was some fight that required a lot of SP, but it's not a problem. No, 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 then do. Okay. So hitting this nerve woke up Bowser. He uh, fell asleep in the um, Peach's castle, but he doesn't know where he is now. Okay. 
And we're back with Bowser again for a bit. Now Bowser tries to use his fire, but it looks like um, he can't. What happened? For some reason, he can't breathe fire anymore. So that'll be something that uh, you have to solve at some point. over that gap to the next <laughs> land. So uh, he meets Fawful again on his hovercraft or whatever. And he shows that he's already started to destroy Bowser's castle. And then he sends uh, this pig creature called Midbus. And this is the first tutorial battle for, for Bowser. This one just stops immediately. We just do that one attack, yeah. and this one we can't dodge it. So we're just making our way through Cavi Cape by passing all the encounters, of course. And then a mysterious voice calls out. And this is um, the introduction to Chak Roads, which is like a teleportation system in the game. But uh, they won't be used in the, in the task. Yeah, it's only useful if you have to revisit areas which mm. as Bowser, which isn't useful for just completing the game. And he's able to teleport right back to um, Kevin Cave Cave where he was originally.
And now we make it to Pack Beach, the next area of the game. There are these uh, rafts that you have to um, punch backwards to use. Cool optimization doing, not right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to their coins away. I do it right now. And here's the uh, introduction to a character called Brock Monsieur. I'm bad at pronouncing that. I'm sure you can do better than me. <laughs> Brock Monsieur. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's asking Bowser to pull the island closer yeah. because he has this amazing block. This is also the introduction to uh, mini games within Bowser's body that will affect Bowser in the in the real world. We can strengthen up Bowser's arms um, by shooting these energy balls into the muscle. Now, with the vacuum block, which will allow us to use to vacuum up enemies in, a, in battle, and uh, we're gonna get a tutorial right away to show that. So when you vacuum up an enemy, um, get sent down to Mar Luigi. In this case, uh, <laughs> normally Iron Legion will fight them, but in this case, uh, it just leaves. So this battle has some RNG. Um, the attacks that he does can vary in time wildly, so by far the fastest one is that coin block. And so... We have to manipulate it to, to only do that attack. Or, not only, as much as we can. Yeah. <laughs> so how hard was uh, the RNG manipulation in this battle? Um, well, it's kind of hard. It's like, well, the, the RNG works in, the, in this game is you have to manipulate it at the start of the, the fight. Um,
Um, and then inside the battle, yeah. Okay, here's an example of waiting. Okay, looks like I'm. I, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, my internet just cut out. Sorry about that. Is the stream up as well? Okay, seems good. Alright, so this boss battle, um, sorry, I don't know how much you explained. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when it's inside you, you want to do a, a certain number of hits be before he attacks you and get fixed back down and stuck like this. Yep, and now we can do a lot of damage to Looper. And stun Looper, I think. Yeah. So, we specifically get excellent hits on the lucky ones. Since the um, excellent animation is slower, we only want to do it if we really need that extra damage, which, often cases, it's not necessary. So on the, the second time, it doesn't spin inside of Bowser, which is which takes a bit of time. And it's also is it it is random how many how many how many times how many turns you get in this phase, right? Exactly. Yep. It's, you get it's two or three. three. Yeah. So I have to manipulate for three, two luckies, and only one spin attack inside of Bowser, which yeah. uh, means kind of difficult. And again, we are just upgrade pal. And it's good that we got level three before um, at this point because that'll be good, uh, good for the next battle. That's why we got those um, counters earlier. In trash pit. And then the um, statue starts spouting water, and Bowser realizes he's pretty thirsty. So he starts drinking up, and this section pipe works, pump works actually, gets flooded. And so this is the first uh, inside Bowser area with um, uh, switching between Bowser and, and the bros so that. Uh, 
the real world affects what's inside um, Bowser. It's the real world, as if inside Bowser isn't real, but, you know. Enemy dog right there. Mm. And also, we're not getting the, uh, the attack pieces in this area. Mm. Yeah, the, so... fire, the fire fall hour is pretty bad in this game. Mm -hmm. So, it's just some puzzles involving raising and lowering the water. And that's pretty much all this, all this area is. And there's this door right here that we need to find something to open it eventually. That's kind of the goal of this area. There'll be a few of these um, bugs that dig through the ground like that. Here below the water lose height faster. Also necessary to lower it for um, for that uh, bone thing to be down. Kind of hard describing some of the things inside Bowser. <laughs> Oh, the, this is Tom's worth. Third, finding it, other people that you're fine. I also like that Mario and Luigi are overlapping. Yeah, why does that happen, you know? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Here, um, they learn, uh, Mini Mario. Which is a classic move in um in the Marlinji games. And then we can rescue Toesworth. I think you have to raise the enemy, the water for that to, to um, dodge that enemy, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, I also need it for that. Yeah.
Now this one we just shoot all the way across the screen. Mm -hmm. um. So we can feed it to the big one. And then we collect the Stingler. Stinger? Stingler? Stingler, yes. Stingler. And this is the um, thing we need to open that door from the beginning of the area. And this shock, I guess, opens up a few new areas, but the only one we can really do anything in is the flame pipe, I believe it's called. I think it's that. Yeah. Yeah, there's no timer. Um, this is a... 40 something minutes into the run. And so, uh, blocking Bowser's flame pipe is this uh, creature. And uh, as will become a running. Uh, joke, I guess. Luigi's pr just always scared of all the bosses. <laughs> uh, so the strategy for this boss is just jump on him, because um, although green shells can do more damage per turn, they're pretty slow, so it just is faster to jump. And this is the main reason um, we got that uh, extra encounter. Trash pit. Like, how much does it help on the later bosses? I know that it helps quite a lot on this one, but I don't think it matters much. Uh, yeah, I think maybe they're, maybe they're mind after. I think basically it's the same level for most of the run after it still, but. Yeah, it, only, it, isn't, it isn't only this game that Luigi is always scared in. As the fight progresses, uh, there's some more different attacks introduced. But we just dodge them all, or counterattack them, most of them. Or I guess all of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all counters for this fight.
including hammering Starlo back into uh, the hit spotlet. It's a good thing Starlo doesn't have any HP. And that's the battle. And now the flame is running through Bowser's uh, pipe, so he can uh, breathe fire again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now we meet up with uh, Brock Monsieur again. Who's calling for his dog. Or, I mean, Block Dog. Who's definitely the best character in this game, I think. So yeah, this is Broggy. And it's gonna be another little tutorial battle um, where we learn to use flame battle. Showtime. It's faster to just get hit here because the counterattack is pretty long. So in order to damage uh, Broggy, you need to uh, set him on fire first, and then you can punch him. Nice lucky hits there, again. And so now we can continue into the uh, Dimble Woods, the next area of the game. Dodging these enemies is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> We had to um, hit those segments in the right order so that we could break the block, block in the way. And this is this uh, shop. And he wants to tell you about a lot of stuff, but we skip all the tutorial, or forget how much uh, is necessary to actually watch here. It tells you about blitties, um, which you can get, um, there's one blitty for you that you can get by uh, vacuuming each enemy, um, and they unlock a special attack, but we're not going to do that. I think 
There's a little pos there's a little space right, right above those bricks you can walk through without breaking them. Cool. crash through um, all the pillars and proceed up north. And now Bowser sees um, an Agumba army stuck in a cage. I think of a way to rescue them. This wiggler statue might be usable as a bridge and tries to lift it and again um, simulates his arm muscles. Uh, so there's another mini game this one before, but now it's a little more com complicated. to this uh, mini game at all or is it always the same um, amount of time i think it's always the same they might be random uh, which pros they uh, they go for i don't remember for if it is yeah Now this fawful copter lets Bowser know that all of his minions have been trapped in cages around the world, and this is how Bowser gets um, his special attacks. So the one that we just learned was Goomba Storm. Then we get a, a tutorial to learn how to use it, but we don't need to use it. <laughs> yeah. Flame does like a good third half of their HP anyway, so the counter to a good amount too. Well, is now a good time for a couple of donations? Sure. Okay, uh, we have a one dollar donation from Taters, who says "Broof, broof." Broof, broof. <laughs> and a uh, dollar thirty from Casey Cake eighteen, who says, "Here's the rest of my money I can donate this year. Hopefully next year I can donate more to a great cause." We thank you so much for that. Thanks. So uh, these are, uh, I know their names, the yeah, Bear Punk, yeah. Private Coomp, and uh, Charging Guy, Elite Trio. Yeah, the Elite Trio, I forgot their names. Yeah. I know them because of Dream Team, because you actually have to know. <laughs> anyway. They're trying to use this cannon, but... 
they don't have a uh, bullet bill to use. Stalo suggests that Bowser goes, f goes to find uh, ammunition of his own. By the way, these little puzzles here. Not much of a puzzle, but... You know. says that there's no bonsai bill here but Bowser still tries to see what what's around and there's this giant carrot he thinks this could be used it's about, about the right size I guess another lifting minigame yeah. and now it's a it's rhythm based this time yeah That's the minigame. <laughs> and Wiggler is angry. <laughs> and he says he even has a bonsai bill that you can use instead of the carrots. But you know, before giving the bonsai bill, he forces Bowser to eat the carrot. But it only gives him one minute to eat it. But we're a task, we can eat fast, I think. Yes. <laughs> so a new, a new part opens up inside Bowser. 
and um, uh, this is a unique mini game where you have to break up all the little pieces of carrot and uh, help them digest it. It's kind of tedious to do, but yeah, a task is uh, pretty fast just clicking all, all there. <laughs> And then there are these special enzymes that break it up even faster. And they're always going to be hidden inside one of the little chunks. And if you use it, then it destroys everything in the stomach. So it's slightly difficult to, to tell um, which chunk it it's in. It'll flash when it happens, but um, obviously for this task, uh, we can just get them uh, instantly every time. I really love how fast this minigame goes. Seconds. Yeah, it's a pretty notorious mini game for people who play the game casually. Um, if they have trouble timing the um, or telling when the flash happens, which I definitely I never had too much trouble with it. But um, yeah, it's not as easy as that looked, obviously. <laughs> So again, we waited uh, before this boss battle to get some good RNG. Um, the way this one works is you have to hit all the segments to make them yellow so that uh, you can take more damage. And Wiggle has this really fast counter where, or attack where you can hit the first three segments. So that's why we hit the first, the fourth one by itself, and then the last three in the um, in the counter attack. And now we're doing punches as the main damage source still, because um, again, we have Goomba Storm, which does a lot more damage per turn, but it's a lot slower overall. I mean, it's not that much slower, is it? I think it's... I don't actually remember. But you can see um, there's a few lucky hits we're getting, and that's why we waited before the battle in that last text box. Manipulate the RNG. The other big thing, yeah. I didn't want the, those lucky dudes with the, the big turnips to show up. Yeah, there's also a few longer attacks that Wiggler has that we want to avoid. This uh, charging one is pretty good. time it wasn't good enough RNG. So the bows aren't used in this battle because it's slower basically. <laughs> um, if the, uh, the fly guys come then um, you can inhale them and have the bows fight them. If you don't inhale them, then they drop the turn up on Bowser, which deals a lot of damage. Um, but either way, that's a slow thing to happen. So we manipulated the fly guys to just never come. And there's that boss battle.
And finally, we get uh, our bonsai bill. But now, of course, something has to go wrong, and our other stomach doesn't feel great. It feels really bad, I think. So Mario and Luigi have to do something about it. This is a bug that was inside the carrot that he just ate, called Dermite. Back-to-back yeah, -back boss battles, pretty much. So like the last one, like Skeletor, we're pretty much just gonna jump. on these little enemies to um for backup I guess or support I don't know yeah. what to call it <laughs> but yeah, you, can um, use, you can use them for attacks too yeah um and their attack is counterable it's slightly precise to do that counter but you can just yeah. kill them all two counters uh pretty fast And then he starts um, using this uh, straw. Straw, yeah, that's what it's called, of course. Um, after a turn, he will uh, generate some HP if you don't destroy the straw. And since Luigi can do enough damage to um, kill it, uh, that's what we do, and use Mario's higher damage to actually damage Thermite during that time. these guys pretty quickly.
So we can start doing some great commands uh, just to save some time. Yeah, and get that, that attack short. Because the fight is over there. Bowser is still hurting, and they uh, Mario Luigi venture further, and yeah. Come across this weird thing. And Thornberg is here. This activates something in Bowser's arm. And Toadbird says, hey, maybe if Bowser punches while sliding, or while, while moving, he can do this slide punch. So, yeah, a new movement uh, mechanic that isn't just walking. And it is faster, so we want to use it uh, wherever possible. But it only goes a set distance, so it's it's not um, oh, it's not like it's not obvious exactly where to use it. Although it's not too hard to optimize, I don't think. Usually, uh, just spam it at the end of the best line. And sometimes walk we'll for a few frames. So they send that bonsai bill. And now we see inside the castle. And Uba says, do the thing. And it turns out they've somehow uh, installed uh, jet uh, jets for on the on the castle. And it can fly too. And now, Bowser just gets crushed. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the end of the game. Okay. So, uh, Mario and Luigi go to this place that just opened when Bowser's in great stress. Let's go. Board the Boats of Revival. And there's, wow, another minigame. 
um, you have to fill up the meter on the top by shooting those uh, energy balls. game in real time it's pretty hard to hit all the balls but um well for the first one it's not too hard but hitting it this fast is yeah, definitely faster than a uh, human will do it it's easy when you know when they're gonna be yeah In the second part, we just spam on the orb. And turns out that they ended up just reviving Bowser. They made him giant. Which, I mean, Bowser's become giant in plenty of other games, so... Showtime. This is the first uh, giant fight. Yeah, so you have to um, hold the DS on its side. Um, so, and, yeah, and just use a touch screen for these battles. This is one of those DS games where the makers decided, hey, we need, we, we need to use the touch screen as much as we possibly can. We also use them for, for uh, Bowser's, um, uh, special attacks. And now there are no spines. So <laughs> So we have to use fire for that one. Which is... Which we have to blow in the microphone for that one. So do you want to tell a story about, uh... Microphone issues? This task? No. That was... Basically the... Microphone stuff is... It's not really great for... For this game. Basically, you need a, a special file that uh, so works well with this game. And, uh, <laughs> for a submission, uh, we had a lot of trouble for syncing and everything, because we need a specific file. And, and basically, a, a special version of the emulator uh, that to be uh, coded just for that. The battle itself is pretty straightforward. Um, just doing the right attacks at the right time and and countering everything. Somehow when you 
Uh, gets small again, he's in the air. I'm not really sure why that happens, but that's how it works. So now we're on to Bumpsy Plains, which is a pretty short area, uh, actually pretty close to Bowser's Castle. Just a few screens of this um, before that. Some coins. This uh, slide is a little bit precise. Not too bad. path outside Bowser's castle. So we equip um Pow Band and Pow Gloves we got from Dermite. Yeah. Shy Dies, uh, the second uh, special attack for Bowser. Um, you can Shy Dies Squad. So it's a little out of the way to get, but it's not too far, and they are actually, it is it will be better than punching for the next battle. here. There's puns in all the game, but I don't know. These ones are memorable for some reason. <laughs> Maybe this is- wait, this isn't nice. No. <laughs> anyway, they send Bowser's castle to the sky, and he's trying to find some way to get it back down. Those are the puns I was thinking about, but you can't even see what they are, so good stuff. They shoot a giant boulder. I mean, he just survived the castle getting uh, landing on him. I think that boulder is a lot smaller, so should be fine. Uh, he, um, here's another uh, rhythm minigame. A little bit uh, more involved than the last one.
That's true, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> so he gets Bowser's Castle to uh, go back to the ground, but kind of destroys a little bit. And now we can get it. So it's clear that these Goombas have been brainwashed or something. And they're calling this place Fawful Theater. So for, in order for the lobby to actually um, open, we have to talk to a bunch of the guests here. And there's a soft lock you can do in this area, right? In one of the booths? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the few glitches in this game, which has some potential to maybe be useful for something. <laughs> it is, involves uh, mashing through dialogue too fast, but in this case, it just can cause a soft lock. There are a couple things in this game that in recent years people have found um, that are related to uh, text and cutscenes, but they haven't really been, uh, nothing useful, that is. <laughs> yeah. Nothing big. Bowser enters the um, theater, but there's no seats for him. But, um... Turns out, Fawful prepared this seat just for Bowser. How nice of Fawful. It's a nice seat that has indentations for his uh, shell. I think. <laughs> this is Fuffle's show. Has chortles. So it turns out the show is just a fight between Bowser and Midbus. Again, we're um, playing this text box to manipulate RNG. Here we get we get hit. <laughs> the crowd will cheer. 
and then we can swallow the the space of the meat to get some uh, some power boost. Yeah, so that's some um, important R R RNG that just happened there. Now we'll use uh, the special attack we just got from the Shy Guys. Where you have to um, drag left on touchscreen. We definitely want to get great on those so the, so the crowd don't cheer. Hit again to get the um, power bonus. This is um, about an hour thirty or forty into the run. That's about right, yeah. Yeah. few hits it's too slow to use shy guy squad so we'll just punch or did is it an sp problem yeah i don't know if it, it's been yeah. more and it's not worth it for to heal back up yeah all right well do we have time for a donation right now uh, sure. Okay, we have a $5 donation from Dr. Mario, who says, When they asked me if I wanted to do a sequel to the first Dr. Mario, this was not exactly what I had in mind. I thought they wanted me to do more with those weird virus guys, not actually climb inside Koopa King. And canonically, I am very confused about the actual proportions of Bowser. He seems to just, you know, be as, as big or as small uh, as he needs to be. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. I feel like everything shrinks when he's in... I feel like it makes more sense if everything shrinks when it gets inside, but... Either way. It doesn't make much sense. And this is the... Um, Speaking of proportions, this is the uh, <laughs> Fat Bowser uh, segment. <laughs> Where um, uh, Fawful's minions treat him to some giant food and force him to eat more and more and more. I hope everyone got to do that this weekend. Yeah. I hope you didn't eat five donuts the size of your head, though. 
What size of Bowser's head? I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I still have a little, uh, some turkey left over. I might make a sandwich later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> elaborate plan for to get Bowser stuck. I don't know why I couldn't have just trapped him in a cage or something. You probably just find a way out. But this is impossible to get out, apparently. So now we go to Fat World. Basically. So we're actually going to get the um, action commands in this, or sorry, the uh, attack pieces in this area. The best attack in the game, definitely. Yep. Yeah, so this is the flab zone. And we finally see Peach. And kidnapped, of course, by uh, those weird. I don't even know how to describe them. You saw them. Do you want to? Do you want the Trevor treasure, or do you want Luigi? And the game doesn't allow you to make the choice and just says, "Hey, so you wanted the treasure, right?" It gives you Luigi anyway. You both anyway. Anyway. And so, what was the treasure? It was badges. So, like, I don't know. Four areas into the game, we finally get badges. And so the way ba badges work in this game is, as as uh, they will take five minutes to explain, um, as you do attacks, you build up the badge meter, and then once they meet in the middle, um, you can use their effect, which this one is um, just refilling HP. meter was probably one of the biggest changes to the um, battle system compared to the previous games in, in the series. Uh, over four, you had badges that, are, that were more like uh, Paper Mario badges that had specific effects that just um, were like always active. But now that's something you have to build up and then use. And the uh, original and the badges that from the original games were kind of repurposed to be uh, accessories, not repurposed, but rebranded. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's more accessories now in in Bowser Inside Story compared to the older ones.
this little um, mini game, I suppose, uh, will give uh, more attack pieces. It's actually really nice. Um, the one the one attack we really need in this area. You don't have to go too far out of the way to get all the attack pieces because they come in groups like this. So we already have uh, five out of ten of them. So this area is a little bit of a maze um, where you have to choose between green and red pipes for each room, but uh, the order is always the same, so yeah. To, to figure out which way to go, you have to answer, there's like some trivia questions you can answer, but it's completely unnecessary. So now, um, this is where uh, we learn spin jump. Which just allows you to uh, spin across to uh, platforms that are further away. And if you're into a whirlwind, then you can go even further. And there's the last attack piece already. And we've unlocked Jump Helmet, which will be an extremely useful um, attack throughout the rest of the game. We're also going to the secret room for that stuff. Yeah. And now no, instead of... Yeah. yeah. There's gonna be a bit of backtracking. Yeah, so we have to save. And then we want to actually, we're instead of continuing the area, we're actually going to leave. This is one of the more, more interesting routing uh, parts of this game. So we have um, the save file now, um, halfway through Lab Zone. we left is we want to go to the challenge node. Um, a little cutscene here because it's the first time we've been here. But this is uh, the place where you fight. Um, there's boss refights and then there's also um, little mini games um, that you can uh, do that, that are they're, they're each based on one of the um, throw attacks. And we're after the reward that you get from the mini game related to jump helmet that Tech just got. So in this um, attack, uh, Mario jumps on the jump the helmet on Luigi's head. In the minigame, you have to just keep on going, um, and you get a point for every uh, line you cross. So can you... Can you tell about um, how you optimize this minigame? Yeah, you basically want to always land on the front of the jump helmet. So we go as fast as possible to the right. Uh, sometimes I uh, to avoid the clocks to not run out of time. Which in one place 
I'm like a few frames off of running out of points. <laughs> yeah, if you just play this normally, the time isn't a huge issue. But if you're being optimal, then yeah, you want to you need to make sure that you don't run out of time. Yeah, so we're after the um, rank, uh, the uh, reward for getting A rank in this, which requires 60, um, passing 60 of the lines. And that will be um, Daredevil Boots, which are really good. We'll explain about them later, I guess. We can kind of explain now, but let's focus on the minigame. This is a case that I had to avoid clocks. Yep. The last line. Um, so now we save and then soft reset. And the interesting thing is that this saves the fact that we just got the daredevil boots, but it doesn't um, save our position. So we can load back into the save in flab zone with the daredevil boots. So if it weren't for this trick, then you would have to. Um, after getting the Daredevil boots, you have to go back all the way through Lab Zone. So this um, skips, uh, skips, yeah, that going back, making remaking of progress in Lab Zone. There's some nice enemy dodges here. And we're reaching the end of the area. Get the stuff off Peach by spin jumping. But they're coming back. And they form themselves into this monster. This is um, Alpha Cretan. Uh, he'll do attacking Mario for when it's red and attacking Luigi for when it's green. And 
we have to get him out of this form by making all of the uh, sections blue. And I also see the power of their devil boots right there with Mario. Yeah, so their devil boots, um, we, we equip them on Mario, and they double his damage, um, but any hits basically one hit KO for Mario, which isn't a huge issue because we weren't uh, planning on taking any damage anyway, but it's kind of scary for RTA, unless you're good, like, not like me. <laughs> So in the second form is called uh, Beta Cretan, and now we can damage the, uh, the, w the real one. And now we can finally use Jump Helmets, and you can see that they're going to do a pretty solid amount of damage. a lot more damage than we were doing before. Um, so the thing about jump helmets is that, well, first of all, they just attack one enemy, which is usually means that they'll do a lot of damage. Um, the other thing is that they use only Mario's POW because Mario is the one that actually makes contact. That's generally how um, uh, the attacks work. And since we put Daredevil Boots on Mario, we're doubling, that completely doubles the entire damage dealt with, um, with the attack. So yeah, that was a um, pretty fast uh, battle. Um, normally he would go back to the other former at some point. Yeah, the yeah. lucky was needed to avoid that. Yeah. But um, jump helmets will be used for a lot of the rest of the run still, like there are there are other attacks we could get, but they're all too slow um, to use. There's, I, there's, I guess, one other one that we use, right? That one's required. So instead of guiding uh, okay. Peach to safety, they instead try to investigate further, see what's going on over here. <clears throat> So I don't even know how to describe this. He's um electrocuting Bowser, I suppose. I What's actually going? He's using it for something. Yeah. 
what's actually going on inside Bowser. Oh, yeah, so here's where um, Peach talks about the Dark Star. Um, basically, there's just this powerful um, dark object um, hidden underneath Toad Town. And Peach is thinking maybe Fawful wants to use um, her power to access the Dark Star for himself. Um, Father's body. And then they leave uh, a treadmill for Bowser to lose some weight. Now he finds himself inside this area called Tunnel, and there's a few um, little puzzles involving uh, blowing up these explosives with his flame. Here you have to time the punch so that they explode the crack. more precise uh, side punches. Uh. And now he meets um, these Monty Moles who are digging a tunnel to uh, Toad Town. Bowser decides to help out by pushing this, pushing the drill. And here's uh, the leg workout minigame.
Bros. I think that's the best line in the game, actually. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this mini game, you just have to um, alternate A and B. And then when there's a rock, you have to hold both. And that's that. But he finds himself um, in this area underneath Toad Town. <laughs> when he enters this uh, room. Well, I think that's that cheated again. I mean, Bowser has gone through a lot already in these only a few hours. But this shock opened up the pipe yard. So. Tobert says there's some pipes. He thinks that they're. Uh, Lead, lead, they lead outside of Bowser's body. Wow. They're basically pipes that he sucked up originally. But, um. They still warp you like usual. So now we have um, Mario and Luigi in 3D, in the outside world. So we're going to get the, um, the ability to use blue shell blocks here. And another um, attack. So these uh, Koopas are teaching Mario and Luigi about how to use um, the shell. Okay. This will be used a lot in the next uh, dungeon. to um, hit things that are um, in the air. I also have this attack piece block has a full 10 attack pieces. So now we have um, 
Yuhu Cannon. Which will be used a few times. It's uh, useful for attacking uh, multiple enemies. So not particularly useful for boss battles. So this is the Toad Town Sewers. And there's the pu these puzzles involving hitting the valves with the shell to move around the blocks and create some bridges. Do you have to optimize anything interesting here, or is it pretty easy? Well, uh, it's not traveled too much. Okay. <laughs> the ultimate goal is of uh, this little area is to hit the three uh, exclamation point blocks that will light up the um, exit. Now there are two uh, completely normal toads. We're blocking the um, place with the dark stars. Oh, no, they're not normal toads, it seems. Who could have guessed? Um, this is a little mandatory battle. Mario's counterattacks do so much that they're not worth using any bro, bro attacks for that one. Just in time to see Fawful destroying the barriers protecting the Dark Star. <laughs> He's pretty excited about having the ability to uh, destroy the world. Or something.
So we finally make it into um, the Toad Town proper. And we go over to see how we can just meet him in Peach's castle. But he um, puts up these barriers. And this will be like the main uh, goal of most of the rest of the game is to um, destroy those barriers. So if we want to find a big skip, uh, finding a way past these barriers would be a good start. I would save a lot of time. Yeah. So you remember back at the beginning of the game? The blorbs? Well... There's lots of them now. Um, there's not much to, that we have to do in Toad Town right now. There are a few, um... Side questy things to do. We are going to get, uh... Tea to restore SP. buy some badges and now so instead of the badges we had before which um increase well which restore hp these ones uh increase damage dealt which is clearly a lot better for you to want to just defeat all these bosses as fast as possible Fake illness to uh, get a meeting with Dr. Toadly. Who is, um, more of a uh, diviner, I guess. At least right now. And yeah, Bowser is able to suddenly appear here because they had Bowseritis or something. That's how that's how it all works. And he decides to fight Mario and Luigi because that's what he does. By the way, he didn't even know that Mario and Luigi were inside him. But I think it's pretty cool to see that, um, to see the attacks that uh, Bowser was doing before you were just playing as him now being used against you. So we're going to use jump helmets again. Yeah, this, Bowser, this battle in particular reminds me of Thousand Year Door because of all the times in that game where Bowser just appears and you have to fight him. <laughs> and there's also, he also use, uses the Goomba Storm attack um, that we didn't use yet.
And I like how you have to counter it. So you can see our badge meter is full now, so the next we can use it to um, to double the damage dealt by That's what that badge does. It's doubling, right? Yeah, that's double for that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm not using it on Bowser, don't worry. I'm saving yeah. for the next boss. Mm -hmm. He has on DS. I guess the, the screen actually says 3DS, doesn't it? Someday we will have 3DS tasses. That'll be a great day. Yes. You can, you can, we can kind of do it now. Um, Citra kind of has the ability to, to make 3DS tasses, but it's not quite there yet. Mm. Especially for full game tasses like this. You can always use lit tasses if you want. <laughs> yeah. have um, used libtest to task Citra, which is a 3DS emulator. I don't really know the details of that, but apparently you can actually make 3DS tasks kind of like that. Uh, the stash stat uh, increases the chance of lucky hits and also gives discounts in shops. Um, so here, totally... Um, ...says that we need to find the star cures to get rid of the barriers in front of Peach's castle. And says that there's one in the forest, so Bowser says, alright, I'll go there to the forest. And after Bowser leaves, he says, oh, looks like there's one in this bug. Or this bug is one of the sages that knows the um, location of a star cure. And Mario and Luigi recognize it from the boss they fought earlier. So they know that it's going to be inside Bowser somewhere. And inside this wall, there's a pipe that uh, leads inside Bowser, so that's where they head. Yeah, this is this is the DS version. And right away, they th they see Dermite, who has one of the star cures. Yeah, the, the uh, display is wrong. Luigi! <laughs> the 
Termite goes over to the energy hold, but there are some um, blocks that, are, that he can go under, or she, I guess. And but Mario and Luigi can't get past. So now uh, we control Bowser instead, who is in Blubble Lake, just outside of Toad Town. Uh, he sees the Koopas, but can't get to them yet. And get some swimming. This is a nice soundtrack. All the songs in this game are great. This one's especially memorable to me. Hey, thanks. So now Bowser uh, inhales the pollen from these flowers and starts the uh, nose minigame. So the controls for this one are a little bit annoying. For Tass, it's not a big deal at all, but the goal is to stimulate all of the uh, things. I don't even know how to describe those things. <laughs> On the side with pollen. Sensors, I guess. And there's a sneeze powerful enough to move a ship. I mean, from what we've seen so far, that's not too surprising. Now we have to move in the opposite direction. Two of this minigame. That's pretty much the same thing. Well, while we're in this olfactory receptor minigame, do we have time for a few donations? Um, yeah, this would be a good time. 
Okay. Uh, we have a $5 donation from SSPX, who just says floof. <laughs> and uh, we have a $5 donation from uh, Kiru, <laughs> um, uh who says, Happy Taz Giving, everyone. Go, Tazbot, go. Thank you. So we uh, just ignored those, those Koopas. Their attack isn't really worth it. Now we got another raft section. Really avoid that encounter. Now there's this weird propeller thing inside the water. to do something. I'm gonna try to uh, sneeze on this propeller, just like the boats. It turned out that it was the top of a tower, and it stomps on him. So, like before, when the castle fell on top of Bowser, this is time for another giant battle. So this is uh, the Tower of Yik battle. The best way to damage it is by getting it inside the water. But of course, also have to make sure that you don't get inside the water as well.
So yeah, we can do a lot of damage while it's in the water. But uh, it's not possible to do this with only one cycle. Um, it does come out and starts to repair itself. that. Uh, nothing really too complicated there. Is there any RNG in that battle? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, giant battles are, are mostly scripted. Yeah. So now we make it inside the Tower of Yik, which is a kind of strange place. I also find this book at the top. And then gets trapped. is um, telling Bowser about the Boo-Ray machine. Which you can use, um, which is inspired by the Boo's ability to become invisible. Good for Mario and Luigi, it makes those uh, blocks disappear. So this is another section where we'll be switching between Mario, and Luigi, and Bowser, uh, so that the real world can affect uh, inside Bowser. And there's Dermite, who we were following this before. It's been going through this little door, but it, we can't get into there right now. But 
The goal of this area is to make a, um, a star-shaped panel out of pieces that we're going to find. This is about um, two and a half hours into the run, for reference. And it's not a console verification. <laughs> Although, DS console verification is uh, in the works. So maybe one day we can see um, this task console verified, but I think it's not the highest priority. But also pretty long, so I imagine it'd be really difficult. <laughs> Probably the mic issues uh, will not help as well. Yeah. There's a lot of problems with uh, <laughs> this game. In terms of um, that sort of stuff. So this um, oddly shaped panel fits into this uh, kind of place. And here is where um, we're about to learn drill. Drill move, what, which is another uh, common move in all of the Mario Luigi games. Well, some games they have drill, and some games uh, it's like uh, dunking underground. Similar idea. The jewel allows us to go under that little um, passage and also activates this nerve, I suppose. So there we switch to Bowser to um, bypass the enemy. And for this one, we wait for it to uh, transform and can go through it. So now we have drill, we can finish this area. So, um, in case it isn't obvious, I guess for those who don't know, you cannot drill on the grayish surfaces because it's too hard. So there's some invisible platforms that you can see them if you turn on the Boo-Ray Boo -ray machine. So you haven't really mentioned that yet. There's been a bunch of them throughout this area. So 
That's four out of five, and this is the last one. Here you can see the um, order to hit the box in if you turn on the machine as well. Is that set when you enter the room? I think so. Yeah. Now we're proceeding on to the final um, area in this section. And Luigi is trying to uh, catch Dermite. Yeah, this marathon is a mixture of task runs and non-task runs. So Dermite escaped again, we have to go to this area, wait for the um, Chrono Plant to go away, Chrono Plorp I believe they're called. The enemy names in this game is, are pretty good. Also, um, by turning on the machine, you can see where the platforms are inside the purple area. The record is 519, so TAS is about 30 minutes faster. Which is a pretty sizable margin. Even for such a long game. Yeah. And finally, Dermite actually talks. Yeah, the, there's mostly RNG Manip, there's um, some, a few other um, things like avoiding counters, I mean, that stuff RTA can do not as cons somewhat consistently. 
Anyway, here's the next boss battle with Dermite again. But um, this time it can transform into a pink form, which is called Wisdom. And so we use the uh, badge, badges to do a super strike, which is double damage. Jump helmet on also with their double boots. I'm doing a lot of damage with Lucky Hit there. So whenever you um, hit Dermite in the blue form, so it goes up to the meter, it goes across the meter to the pink form. And then uh, it's a very high defense in this, um, in this form. So you have to get it out of it with more hits that don't do as much damage necessarily. I'm um, attacking the rod does, um, does more on the meter. And I think um, this is one spot where it would have been better to use green shells, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So because the green shells do more hits, and they don't have much damage, because, but because they, have, um, they do more hits per turn, or I guess per unit time as well, it would have been faster to use those here by a small amount of time. I think it was something like 15 seconds. That's, that's like the one spot where this task is a little bit um, unoptimal. But we still defeat the boss a lot faster than RTA would because of the lucky hits. Does help a lot. Yeah, getting getting um, three power on every roll is kind of difficult, and it's really good to be able to do it. <laughs> Obviously, for tasks, it's it's extremely easy. <laughs> and now, wisdom transforms or dermite transforms into wisdom. I guess this is the true wisdom form. And they're very happy to just give the star cure. That's one out of three star cures. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now in this area, um, well, we meet Tobert again, which means Bowser's about to learn a new move. In this case, by spinning into this finger, I guess, <laughs> it activates these three nodes.
and by drilling into the nodes. It breaks that entire column. Once again, anatomy is extremely accurate in this game. So yeah, Bowser learned um, the body slam. Which can be used to hit switches. Um, and also later on, we used to uh, break through some, some breakable grounds. The bombs away! So um, now Bowser can leave Taraviak. And he meets up with a uh, private goomp again. Yes, um, uh, the giant battles require Mike in this game, and there's a custom build of Dismumi which allowed um, Mike data to be encoded inside the movie file. So, um, Birdly, which is Doc, which is Doctor Toadly's um, bird, uh, which just so flies around the overworld, um, told Bowser that the next star cure is in Bowser's castle. So that's where he's gonna head now. A shortcut from Global Lake to Bumsy Plains. And we're going to kind of go the same way as before to um, Bowser's Castle. But this time, uh, since we've body slam, enter a different way. I have no, I have no idea if there are any tasks um, that require human invention in this marathon, at least. Out there in general, um, I don't really know. <laughs> it's probably something like that, but generally tasks are automatic.
So we're climbing Bowser's castle. Uh, we took the shortcut using Body Slam. But that uh, is a little bit too... Um, too tough to break with just with his body. On the balcony, he sees a Fawful statue. And things that can be used to break the grates. Another mini game where we um, of Bowser's legs. Now we're in the basement of the castle. We're heading to um, the treasure room, which is a little bit ways away from here. But Bowser thinks he can find the star cure there. And we just ignore the bob bombs as well. So we use uh, the little jump you get from Body Slam to skip over those bob bombs, and we can also uh, use a side punch to skip a little bit of that area. Entrance to the uh, treasure room. Um, you have to actually see what the code is for this thing by pressing the switch. This is um, on emulator, but it's a recording. It's not being uh, played back live. It's randomized every time you press the switch. There's only a few options for it. Maybe like... Yeah. And if you don't press the switch, then no matter what you do, it will not work. Anyway, he made it to the treasure room, but it turns out there's uh, railroad tracks being built through it. And while trying to get to the stock here inside the safe, well, you could have seen this coming. The train, uh, 
starts moving and traps Bowser. So again, it's time for another giant battle. Let's go. It's randomized, but um, RNG is determinants. <laughs> so, no, no, what's the word? Uh, it's all determined by the RNG value. So, like, it's it's um, not actually random each time you play back the um, run. Deterministic, yes. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, this is the Fawful Express fight. Um, uh, pretty notorious. A lot of people have trouble with this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, have, I have trouble. Yeah. Um, you have to kill it, kill the train before it reaches its destination, which is indicated by the um, by the timer, or I guess it's actually a uh, distance a measurement. <laughs> distance to the next station, or to the. Back to the, um... Man. I don't know how to describe this. <laughs> to the last station. Yeah. yeah. And you can only use fire to manage. And to make it, uh, almost every attack needs to be excellent. And when blowing, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah, but you have to be good with the microphone. So, <laughs> there isn't any issue with um, having to account for different possibilities with that code. It's just, um, since we do always do the same inputs beforehand, um, the code's always going to be the same each time you play back the tasks. And so occasionally the train will um, hide behind something else, in this case, well not necessarily hide behind, but we have to fight this um, hill instead of the train. 
by lighting it on fire, it starts to take a lot of damage. Also, hitting it against the um, spike wall does damage to it. And, um... The rain heals the hill. It's on fire. It puts out the fire, at least. Here's the final station, and there's one more turn to deal damage. Still confused about that code. <laughs> um, there isn't anything special we had to do for making that part work. Since it's a, if we do the same inputs beforehand, the code will always be consistent. After that fight, um, Bowser heads back to the treasure room to find the star cure. And the elite trio prepared the uh, safe for him. So we're just gonna open the safe. But it looks like Bowser can't remember the ID or the code. Combination. So he asks Starlo to find the um, combination, and a new area opens up. This is the memory banks, and this thing operating the uh, computer looking thing. Uh, he's scanning Mario and Luigi. I don't know if the safe code references anything. I don't think it does. Anyway, they decide that Mario and Luigi are viruses. So...
This is another boss battle. So in this case, there's there are two targets. Um, we first attack Luigi. We're again just going to use jump helmets because they are very powerful. So with that Super Strike, two Jump Helmets were enough to get rid of uh, the Mario memory. And they have the third Jump Helmet for Luigi. And that's the fight. Um, we're still seeing how powerful jump helmets are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is now a good time to get a donation in? Um, sure, yeah, we have some time right now. Okay. Uh, we have a $1 donation from Raysama who asks, uh, can I get an F in chat for Tech Team's CompuCat's broken hair tie? He must now forever leave his glorious, luscious hair down for the rest of the event. <laughs> I think these are some some uh, some Discord memes uh, leaking into the, yep. the demos. So. <laughs> 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 but thank you, Raysama. Thank you all for your donations. So now we're searching through Bowser's memories to find the combination. And here it is, but it's all jumbled up. So this is a puzzle solving mini game right here. And I just love how fast the task completes it. You can also self block after that if you mash too fast. That's kind yeah. of fun. But yeah, that's how memories work. They're just uh, stored in little paintings, and um, if you get somebody to go inside your brain and solve a puzzle, then you can remember stuff. So the Elicio tells Bowser there's something else inside there. And instead trap him inside the safe. This is their um, huge betrayal of Bowser in alliance with Fawful. 
and they toss the safe somewhere. So to get the star cure to Mario and Luigi, he just ate it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a little bit gross, but we have it nonetheless. So there's only one more to find. To um, get help with finding it, they are we're going to to me totally again. First, we're gonna get the DX Pow gloves in the secret location. And it's in Plaque Beach somewhere. And here's the, um, the air meter, I guess, tutorial. Not really a tutorial, though, it's like testing their ability to um, blow air. You actually have to use the mic for this like, as well. Um. And here is a tiny little skip. You're supposed to use, um, an air balloon to get up to catch Birdly, but you can do what's called a ledge clip. Clip on top of the um, doorway and then spin over to the roof or the ceiling where Birdly is. So that right there is the biggest skip in the game, I would say. It's definitely the biggest glitch in the game that's useful. Um, there's some other things that could be considered a skip, I guess, that aren't really glitches. Like the, um, the save abuse in um, Flab Zone to get to get Daredevil Boots. But now, um, Mar and Luigi are on the way to Plaque Beach, They're taking a shortcut through, uh, move up a lake through a dimple wood. Um, we're going to need 10 attack pieces from dimple wood to get the special attack there. It's actually required in one of the fights, like a plot required, um, attack. We're gonna get them along the way to going to Pack Beach because we can. Um, we could just go to Pack Beach and then the guy will say, "Hey, you need to get the attack pieces in Dimble Wood." But we're getting them all the way.
So there's six attack pieces and blocks and then that we can get right now, and the last four are not accessible yet. Uh, no, it's not. Th this attack is not uh, stronger or faster. For one target, at least. But it's useful for. It'll be useful for multiple targets. So the fifth attack piece is behind this Wiggler stone where we need to use blue shell again. Yeah, pretty much we'll be using Jump Helmet for single targets and the new attack for, um, for multiple targets. There's not that many places where we'll have to fight multiple targets at once. So there's a weird glitch here. <laughs> um, I'm not sure why it happens. Yep, it's one of the strange things that uh, we don't really know in this game. <laughs> but the music is back now, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to task 3DS games now. Maybe one day we'll make a task for the um, remake, but not now. So um, the sage with who has the third star cure is in this area. These little mountain places next to Black Beach. And here's the first time we'll be. Oh no! I guess we used balloon inside a uh, the wood just then. But this is what the ability you're supposed to use to um, uh, to get to Birdly inside the clinic that we skipped earlier. That's where you're supposed to learn about this ability. stair jumps on here. It's been a while since we talked about those. But you can um, normally be walking up the slope uh, decreases your speed, but if you jump while facing a different direction, then you can keep normal walking speed up slopes. But here is um, Chakron, who's the third sage. We have, haven't actually seen the second sage. We won't, won't talk about that, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, but he says, you must shake me in order to get my star key or something like that. I don't know. I have to get him out of that position that he's uh, staying in.
And we can activate this shortcut when we come back later with the attack. So once now that we've hit that trigger, um, some place in the uh, wood opens up so that we can get the rest of the uh, attack pieces. So we have to ask for Widler's permission to pass through here. Showing that um, we already have six attack pieces. So we can get the rest that are behind here. After hitting that block, some sock ops come and uh, kidnap Mario. Or. After him, I suppose is a better way to say it, but. Because we're so. In this section, we're solo Luigi. Um, just pause to equip the Daredevil boots to Luigi. They're original Mario. Some nice jumps across these platforms. <laughs> So we have to go rescue Mario. 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 Now it's a uh, sock ops inside story. Mama me. We have to fight these uh, little cutlets. They're the same enemy as the boss battle from way earlier, but little, I guess. Um, and by doing some nice counterattacks, we were able to defeat it with only two turns. Well, we found Mario, but we don't... Now he's gone somewhere else. And now Luigi is stuck inside. And so finally we can start collecting the rest of the attack pieces. And the sock up, inside the sock up you can walk on the thorns. And here's the last attack block, but Mario. the sock ups are guarding it. And so here's where a Yuhu Cannon is used. Since there's four targets, it's nice. You can see how much more damage Mario is doing again with the um, Daredevil boots. 
Did the lucky hit save time? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> and finally there it is, the final attack piece. And so we've learned Snack Basket. And this attack, um, what it is is Luigi eats a lot of snacks, gets fat, and shakes the ground. That's the attack. And that'll be the one we use to shake Chakron from his position. using the shortcut to get back up to uh, Chakron. Let's go! Okie dokie. So we're gonna use Snack Basket to um, shake him. But instead of giving us the, sh the star cure, it just falls right off the edge. Well, there's a star cure. And then he just whoops us all the way back to Toe Town. Pretty convenient. So now we have all three Star Cures, which means um, Toadly knows how to get rid of the barriers. We've collected all the plot items. And also, the Miracle Cures, it's called, um, was able to cure the Blorbs. So, yeah. 
I kind of feel like the Blorms were mm -hmm. not uh, <laughs> mentioned ver as much as they like were, uh, much as how important they should have been or something. I don't know, that was a bad way of describing it, but... <laughs> they like try to be relevant to the plot, but then they're not actually that relevant. So we're going inside here to collect um, muscleware, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Miracle Totally Cure. <laughs> so this will um, increase how a little bit? I think it's 30 pounds. Yeah, something like that. So now we're finally in Peach's castle. Um, this is the outside part. There's an attack here that's pretty good, but it takes a, quite a while to get. It's um, a long cutscene. So we're just making our way to the back part of the garden. Yeah, we don't go for bro Broggy Bonker either, that's quite a large detour. A little bit cool jumps on the boiler to uh, get over here. And there's a bit of a dead end. But. Here's Midas again. And he assembles some trash to make a trash can. And this is Junker, the next boss. We're gonna use Super Strike Jump Helmet again. Quite a lot of damage dealt in the first turn. Um, that was, brings out um, some smaller trash cans. We're just gonna keep on attacking Junker.
So that's only four jump helmets and feed the boss. Um, we, also get we also get special clothes here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boost uh, special attacks. It's a 50% chance of drop. No, the, the countering was not is not hard to do for a task. Just find the right frame and do it. have to account for all scenarios when fighting a boss because we instead we would just manipulate the RNG so that he does the best attacks. So like yeah, if he if Junker captured one of the bros, it'd be pretty bad. So we make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, that, that's why uh, we needed the, the speed boost. Mm -hmm. So there's a pipe right there and it's back into Bowser. And also, Junker threw the safe containing Bowser. <laughs> and this is the... Um, Oh, what is this place called? I don't know. But in order to stimulate this spot, um, to help to help Bowser's back, Bros jig drill drilled into it, and then they're having uh, some tea. So here you're supposed to wait for something like five minutes. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in five minutes after this whole section's done. It's waiting. No. Uh, and to skip that oh wait, um, there's actually a code you can press. Um, one of the toads tells you about it in the game. And just makes it go instant. And so this fixed Bowser's back and also uh, again made him learn a new move where he can transform into a spike ball, roll around. This is a little bit faster than walking, too. And side punch. And also, he can roll up these um, dirt uh, walls. And also destroy the, those statues. And now... We're going all the way into Peach's castle. Which has also been completely taken over by Fawful, of course. And so in this section, there's three keys that um, you need to find. You don't actually need all of them, but... They are uh, in these fossil copters that you have to <laughs> go and um, follow. So grab that wicked shell, and then. Uh, we can get the red key. This one's the easiest one to get. Although it's not required, it's really good because it un it unlocks uh, another special attack. 
the last one we're going to get in this run. It's been a while since we've had a Bowser fight that wasn't giant. By now, uh, we're pretty underleveled, actually. I mean, that kind of goes without saying. This is an RPG speedrun. Um, but our attacks are not that great for the end game here. So the one we really need is the blue key. We're not going to get the green one. I think that the green door leads to like the economy ring or something. I don't remember exactly which item it is. Uh, I don't remember either. Yeah, it's something that's it's good, but it's not useful for this. So there's um, following the blue key gets kind of tedious, but it's necessary. the side punch there for <laughs> just one use. And then we're gonna use this launch thing to get the blue key. And also, um, when in the ball form, these spikes can't damage you, but so we can uh, exit the ball form to uh, get sent back to the beginning. A little bit of time. And now we can use the blue key to get on to the next place. So another use of these um, launch things. I really wish there were better names for things in this game, but there you go. So there's a whole area to the uh, to the right of this that we don't do because you can just not do it. Kind of strange, but yeah. Instead, we're doing this part to the left where it doesn't bomb. A bomb's on tracks again. And then, um, again, this uh, timing the punch to blow up the walls, like back in the tunnel a while ago. Now here's uh, where you can really see the physics of this game shine. So Bowser gets set on fire. And the lumbar nook opens up. Oh, sorry, that's not the word. The chest station. Lumbar nook's the other one. Um, this is the last mini game that's introduced, and it's basically controlling Bowser's spike ball in midair. The goal here is to get up to the top and defeat the giant piranha plants. And the controls are a little bit strange. <laughs> I never really understood them when playing this casually. You just go in the direction of the, pir of the piranha plants to move Bowser.
So we're gonna take a little detour to get another item. One's power band or something. Yeah, power band plus, yes. And we're approaching the next boss, so we're gonna equip a um, power band, good shell. And here's where Buffalo is transferring Peach's power to the Dark Star. Now, Midbus transforms into Blizzard Bibdus because he's ice powers. Showtime. So, in this battle, we're going to take some damage. Uh, and the reason is because we want to activate a um, effect called Fury. It only activates once you've taken a certain amount of hits. I think you have to take 10 hits or something. Do you know the exact number? Uh, I don't know really how it works. Yeah. I don't think anyone really knows the specifics, but um, it's related to taking, you have to take enough damage and then it'll allow you to get, then it's random whether or not you will, uh, Get it. But this is the one point in the run where it is worth it. Go for it, because otherwise, most of the time you try to take too much damage, you're probably gonna die. But yeah, you um We have to use, uh, we have to heal so we don't, since we're taking damage, like I said, if we don't heal, we're gonna die, so. So now we're using the new attack Magic Koopa Mob. It does a good amount of damage. And then with the snowball attack again, we're gonna take the opportunity to get more hits in. The goal was to get um, eight points of eight, eight uh, snowmen killed. We need to heal again so we can take more damage. And finally, Fury is activated. So now our attacks will do... This is also double damage, I think. Yes. Uh -huh. 
So it's very worth to um, take that extra time to get hit and heal. I think it stays like one minute in this fight or, or something like that. Mm. Was it 17 before? I thought it was 12. <laughs> Um, there's uh, the bomb bomb disappears it's inside the snowball, so it's a little bit more difficult. And that's it. I think that's probably one of the most unique battles in this um, this task because of fury use. It's really nice to see that that got um, that it that it is indeed faster to get fury. Well, there's so there's rounding going on in the um, in the. Uh, damage formula. Like most of the damage uh, calculation is done with decimals, but the final number is just rounded to the nearest integer. So it's possible for something that's doubled to to round to an odd number. I'm pretty sure that it's always worth waiting for the three. I mean, how much testing did you do about that, Vince? Is it... Right. I did no testing for that thing. Okay. I just <laughs> testing <laughs> tried to gain the Dark Star's power for himself using suction. Bowser hit him away. But now, um... Something even worse is happening. Well, Bowser eats pretty much everything in this game, so yeah, he ate the Dark Star as well. Um, the airway, we actually have had, ha had access to it for quite a while, but um, the first platform is you can't get past it until um, it gets frozen, which is what's going on now when he's uh, <laughs> freezing his throat with Nimbus's ice. Not cold. Not cold. Not. I like that moment. 
So this is the um, final inside Bowser area. And here's one encounter that's uh, hard to avoid. Uh, did you eventually just, like find some way to avoid it uh, without that was faster? Yeah, I found a way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's it's a lot harder than anything else before. It's... So this uh, area, of course, has um, freezing and unfreezing puzzles. You need to freeze the ground for the, in order to slide the blocks. There's also ice physics, which don't really matter too much, but... You need to unfreeze um, this so the water can melt the fire. And also, the switch needs to be unfrozen. You need to freeze the water block and push that on the ice. Then unfreeze the button. See the dark star is sealing some of Bowser's DNA. And now the Dark Star has Bowser arms. Now we have these weird uh, transporter things. Unfreeze them so they can grab on. Uh, is now a good chance to interject with a bit of an announcement? Yeah, sure. I uh, just want to let chat know that uh, we are coming up on your last chance to get donations in to pick the file name for the Zelda Metroid randomizer. Um, Steve is currently in the lead uh, with it $44.99, well, followed by Yeet at $20. Uh, so feel free to get those donations in. And we've also uh, activated a new incentive, Super Mario 64 Drum Percent Jam Out. 
Uh, if you want to see CZR jam out at the end of the credits, uh, <laughs> we'll need to get those donations, and the goal is $500. It's definitely going to be uh, an exciting run for sure. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if anyone hasn't seen this run yet, you are absolutely in for a surprise. Like, this is a real treat. So, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Oh, yeah. The Dark Star is now stealing more of Bowser's DNA. And this time, it learned to breathe fire. So here's um, Lift Globins, which you control with the stylus. I really, I really like to see the way Tass um, controls these, because they're pretty difficult to do normally. At least to have precise control over them. So it's really satisfying to see this, <laughs> I think. Yeah, for this section, we just have to hit the blocks in order. Um, very easy for Sass. But, like I said, with the um, somewhat hard to control lift, it, it is somewhat difficult normally. <laughs> So we can use um, Drill to avoid enemies. That's one case where it's used. Is it the only place in the whole run? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. So here's another encounter that there's no way to avoid, or at least it's faster to get it. And again, the, the same. It's, these are, the enemies are just too big to jump over. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now we're coming up on the boss fight with the Dark Star itself. Waiting on the sex box to manipulate RNG for the fight. And it's definitely transforming into Bowser somehow. Even learns uh, Bowser's vacuum ability. So for this battle, um, he creates the Dark Satellites, which we have to get rid of before we can do any damage to Dark Star. Just like before, we're just gonna jump helmet. Just one jump helmet is enough to deal enough damage to kill them. They don't really die, but they're like, let's see. And you have to make sure to hit Saddlemite, not the bomb. Once he gets hit by two Saddlemites. Now he's vulnerable. And this is a pretty fast attack. Now I'll use the Super Strike. And we also manipulate a lucky hit. And um, that's all. That's entire HP. And we also kill Luigi, too. <laughs> if you don't uh, have Luigi run away, then this attack does quite a lot of damage. The reason for killing Luigi is because um, it skips his level ups. That's the only reason, right? Is there some other reason? Well, we just don't need his levels. Yeah. That's pretty much it. His stats don't really matter anymore. And we also got the star wear. Which yeah. Is a, which is a big boost in power. It's 80 power. Yeah. <laughs> 
So the Dark Star, now in the form of Bowser, needs uh, a little bit more power. And, well, Fawful was able to um, suction off a little bit of the power um, before Bowser hit him away, so that's the power that Dark Fawful, or Dark Bowser needs now. So we're following Dark Bowser outside. And now it's time for Super Princess Peach's Castle of Fury. He's completely transformed Aegis Castle. And here's the last uh, giant battle preparation. So in, here's the final uh, giant battle against Peach's Castle. It creates a uh, vortex of some sort behind Bowser. And you have to avoid, um, make sure you don't get too close to it. Um, this battle is kind of cool, but it's also completely scripted. So there really isn't much for a task to do.
This time, Bowser shoots the black hole to be in behind the castle. Yeah, I think this battle is pretty self-explanatory. Um, yes, I believe it's impossible to beat this with no damage. It's because of how scripted it is. <laughs> We just have to keep on uh, using punch. Now it also becomes invisible, which is not actually that difficult to hit back. Now for some reason the uh, black holes get much stronger and they're drawn much closer. And we can finish it off by just Sliding into him a few times. Oh, yeah. 
Now we equip uh, D Star Wear and then we put Muscle Wear on Luigi. Now um, Dark Fuffle is looking for uh, the Dark Star. And we follow him into the conference room. And he challenges him to a final battle where he finally gets to actually fight Fawful. So we're going to use Shy Guy Squad on the vacuum helmet. Um, we need to defeat the vacuum helmet so that we can do uh, more damage to Fawful himself. takes away no items, which is means we just have to use jumps for this. But uh, we have the star wear and daredevil boots, so we still do a lot of damage just with normal jumps too. Another great lucky hit to defeat him with only one jump helmet after those jumps. So now we get a... Uh, to really fight Fawful. We're gonna bust out Magic Koopa Mob again. This attack also is kind of difficult to get the counters in uh, normally, but with tasks you can just do it really fast, which is really cool. Another Magic Koopa Mob. And to not need to Restore MP or SP. We'll use the last Shy Guy Squad instead at the end. And that's Dark Fawful. There's still some 
Dark, uh, Dark Star left. Well, now all of the dark power is consolidated. Now that he has legs, he has all the power he can possibly have. Or something like that. And so it's coming down to just having to fight Dark Bowser. So we do this mini game again where we uh, control Bowser Spike Ball in midair. And this time we have to um, hit Dark Bowser against the wall five times. Or not against the wall, but just hit him. And I really like how fast that's done as well. Was how how did you optimize that? Was there was there any challenge to that? No, not too bad, but. Uh... Sometimes they just collide into each other. Yeah. That's the only annoying part about that. Mm -hmm. Now all of the Mushroom Kingdom is getting covered with dark energy. Maybe it's just wind. Starlo finally tells Bowser that Mario and Luigi are actually with them, but Bowser doesn't really understand. And yeah, we got the classic, amazing final boss music. So we have to fight uh, Dark Bowser as Bowser. Um, counter that attack, and then use Magic Koopa Mob, just like before. So this former Dark Bowser only has um, 1,000 HP, so we've already dealt about half of it. And when you um, escape the cage that quickly, it kind of takes a while for the energy ball to go off screen. It's kind of funny. He has very little HP left. Um, we actually kill him on a counter attack, and this is important because um, it skips a very long attack that Dark Bowser will do otherwise, 
where you have to um, chase him and or there's a lot of minions that will be spawned and you have to kill them all. But you have to hit the belly which will cause Darkstar to come out and then use vacuum on it. And now Mar and Luigi have to fight the Darkstar core. Uh, before damaging it, um, you have to uh, kill the eyes and the tentacles. Yeah, a lot of people say the music in this game reminds them of Kingdom Hearts because they have the same composer. use snack basket um, this is the one case where we actually have to kill multiple targets at once so snack basket is a good way to kill them and now we can attack the dark star core we only really get a few turns, but uh, with a Super Strike Jump Helmet. And a lucky hit. That actually deals all of the damage to Dark Star Core. Pretty impressive how much power we actually get by the end of the game to do that. And now we just have to punch Dark Bowser a few times. And that's pretty much the end of the game. So there's about, um, I don't know, something like 10 minutes or so of epilogue and credits. Uh, we can watch that, we can continue on to the next run. Um, but I think, I mean, not too long, we'll... We'll watch it. The um, the uh, final input is at the very end of the credits because there's a um, score screen basically that you have to advance past. There's also dialogue, yeah. Yeah, and I wanted at least to reach uh, RTA timing, which is. Uh... Oh, yes. There's a small cutscene after the credits before we see the end. Yeah. Yahoo! Uh, let's see. So, what do we say in this? Well, I'm. Let me just say, I'm really glad we got to show off this run here. Um, about to take up five hours of this uh, weekend <laughs> with a game I love. Uh, Oh, oh, also, I will be showing off the Martin Luigi Partners in Time task tomorrow, as well as a quick uh, Super Mario 64 DS task. Yeah, the Partners in Time task is pretty good. Yeah, it's a definitely more of a... Um, it has a lot more task techniques. So, if you like this, you'll definitely enjoy that tomorrow.
Yep, thanks to everybody who stuck around for five hours or however long of this you watched. <laughs> and everybody who's watching the marathon and donating, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you both so much for uh, sharing this with us and providing commentary. This is quite a run. Yeah. Uh, so h- how long did it take you to actually author this Taz? Around eight months to make it, to make it up. Wow, that's, uh, that's dedication. Mm. <laughs> thank yeah. you for doing that. You're welcome. And uh, so, yeah, and how did the sort of discoveries come up that you could use uh, special uh, audio files for mimicking the, uh, like, the, the mic mechanics uh, in, in the emulator and, and things like that? Like, how, how, how did those discoveries come about? Um, so, the, so, Dismumi uh, originally had a capability to... Um, play uh, audio files through the mic but there wasn't a way to embed them within the movie so you had to uh, have it selected I don't actually know the full details I've probably been probably be explaining this uh, but you had to play the movie with it um, selected Let's, and then but it wasn't like actually within the movie file itself. I don't know, Vince can probably expand on that. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. They, there's different options in the, in the emulator for uh, for how you want to feed the in the microphone. There's an there's an internal sound file, but it just doesn't work with this. And I I found somewhere. A sound file, and for that, it in that case it works. You would need the, the specific file for the run to sync. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Well, very cool. And Nintendo always has got to be throwing curveballs at uh at emulators. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's great that uh that that, that we. Um, got past that hurdle of needing the mic input because I mean there's probably a lot there's lots of other DS games that require uh, mic input and now it's a lot easier for those to be tasked mm, yeah no I definitely <laughs> there's definitely some games where I remember I, I'm just spitting all over my DS while yeah. I like <laughs> blow into this yep All right, and then I guess we've got a few more inputs here. Yeah, there's a little bit of cutting after this. So, I mean, in the credits, we saw that um, everyone was... Bowser's minions were repairing his castle, and Toad's were repairing Peach's castle. And... Starro has a present for Bowser. And there it is, the end. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you uh, again, both. Thank you so much for this round. This was this was awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yep. Thanks for giving us the opportunity.